In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Welcome to another session of Ask Father, brought to you by the Fathom Center. My name is Father Michael Rodriguez, and I'm a priest of the Diocese of El Paso, Texas. Today we have a question from Martina. This is what Martina asks. Dear Father, what can I say to my husband so I can take him with me to confession. I am Catholic and he is Orthodox. First Church of the East from Baghdad, Iraq. He goes to church with me, no problem. But they don't believe you have to talk to a priest. Just what is said in church or in your room in the house. Are all these people not going to confession in trouble? Thank you for helping me. You're welcome, Martin. So, in answer to your question, uh, I'm first going to comment a little bit, Martina, on the background information that you provided for me, and then I'll provide the answer. You mentioned that you are Catholic and your husband Orthodox. This brings up the important topic of mixed marriages, that is, marriages between a Catholic and a non-Catholic. There is a lot to say about this issue, but for now, I will just simply say that this already is a very significant problem. Traditionally, the Catholic Church has prohibited mixed marriages. Um, one of the truly sad aspects of what is taking place in our beloved Church in the aftermath of the Second Vatican Council precisely has to do regarding with, this, with, with these mixed marriages. What has always been prohibited, always, prohibited by the Catholic Church in the last, let's say again, 50 years, it's become very lax. And you have all these mixed marriages taking place left and right within the Catholic Church. It's a, it's, um, uh, a tragedy. Um, mixed marriages are a very serious problem and the Catholic Church has always prohibited them because as Catholics, we must marry Catholics. You know, this is such a significant problem. I'll, just, uh, I'll share something personally. Uh, because of my particular situation right now, you know, I've, I've been in, in difficulties um, in my own diocese for many years now, where I don't, at present, for many years now, I don't have an official uh, pastoral assignment. I, for a number of years now, I have not performed any weddings. But were I to perform a wedding right now, I can tell you that uh, not only would I obviously never perform a mixed marriage, that is, between a uh, Catholic and a non-Catholic, but I'd say it's very likely, and I say maybe a very extreme exception, I would not even be willing to marry a, uh, a traditional Catholic with a Catholic that's going to the Novus Ordo. Um, obviously, the Catholics have a right to marry, but... In, in an instance like that, I would explain to the couple what's at stake, and you know, you know, they, you know, you know, insist and well, Father, you know, God's calling us to marriage. You know, I would just tell them, look, I think that we can uh, mutually agree that you go find another priest to marry. Uh, it's not that it's impossible for you to marry, but I in conscience cannot. And all of that goes back to really why the church in the first place prohibits mixed marriages. The church in the first place prohibits mixed marriages because of the difference in religion. And this causes far too many problems and issues in a marriage. Well, the problems are so grave right now in the Catholic Church that the difference between our true Catholicism, traditional Catholicism, and the Novus Ordo, those differences really are at that level. So, I, I mentioned this just so that you realize, um, Martina, that I think really this is a, a bigger problem that you have uh, more so than the fact that your husband won't go to confession with you. But I'll, but I'll get to that in a moment. I do want to say that the Orthodox do believe in the sacrament of confession. So I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, how your husband views the Orthodox religion or, or the way that he practices, practices it. 
Um, and then another comment, because I think this certainly applies to your husband as you describe it, Martina, and it describes many, many Catholics, describes many of us, and that's why I wanted to comment on it, and that is, it is a grave sin. It is a grave sin to think that I have the moral right to pick and choose when it comes to religion. I absolutely do not. I have no moral right now, and I say moral right because I do have the ability in the sense that I have free will. God has given me free will. Because he's given me free will, well, yes, I can, I can reject the truth and choose error. I can reject the good and choose evil, but I don't have a moral right to error. And so it is a grave sin to think that you know, I can just pick and choose whatever I want. All of it comes down to belief in Jesus Christ and what his church teaches. Because what his church teaches, he teaches. And that's why I can't pick and choose. The one who teaches me to believe and teaches me what is good and teaches me what is true is Jesus Christ himself and his church. And so we have to accept everything that he teaches, everything that the church proposes to us, especially the seven sacraments. And so, obviously, were Martina's husband a um, you know, practicing Catholic, and really even I would say a practicing you know, Orthodox, because again, they have the sacrament of confession, then you know, he or she, the person, most certainly has a duty to go to confession because we do not have, again, that moral right to be picking and choosing what we want to accept, you know, within Catholicism and that which we don't want to accept. And so you ask, uh, Martina, you say, are all these people not going to confession in trouble? Yes, they are. Those, I mean, I'll apply that first to the question of religion and then the confession. Those who do not profess the true religion, and if you're paying close attention, Mark, Mark, Martina, already here, your, your husband falls into this category, which is why I said earlier that this is your bigger problem. Those who do not confess or, or do not profess the true religion are in trouble. Big trouble. The biggest trouble because the salvation, the eternal salvation of your souls is at risk. And the same applies to those who choose, to, to, to those who pick and choose within Catholicism. Those who pick and choose within Catholicism, for example, people who don't think they have to go to confession, they're in trouble. They're in big trouble. They're in the biggest trouble. The eternal salvation of their souls. Now then, finally, to answer directly your question, Martina, what can I say to my husband so I can take him with me to confession? Well, as I told you earlier, your first step is not for him to go to confession with you. The first step is he has to convert to the true faith. Going back to the whole theme of mixed marriages, the reason why the Catholic or as a uh, kind of a further explanation of the church prohibiting mixed marriages, what the church basically is saying is that if in fact God is calling you to marriage and it's a person that is not Catholic, well then that person first has to convert. That person first has to convert of their own free will to Catholicism and then there can be a marriage. If the person cannot of their own free will or does not convert to Catholicism, then it's time to sacrifice that for the truth, for Christ, for God, for our faith. And so basically your position, Martina, because you're already married to your husband, obviously, you have to make every effort to pray for his conversion. And that's really your first step. You have to pray for him and you have to encourage him in this path. But remember, it's not so much what you say, because in your question you say, what should I say to my husband? It's not so much what you say. It's really what you believe in what you do because the point here is that you have to work in meriting God's grace. You have to work in meriting God's grace 
so that your life and your words will help in the conversion of your husband. And you also have to work hard in meriting God's grace also for your husband. Basically, you're interceding for your husband so that God will grant your husband the grace to convert. Now, all of this does apply also to your specific question, Martina. Were your husband Catholic? If, and, and this applies, I think, to many of our viewers. Let's say you have a viewer and you have a you know, Catholic, you know, both are Catholic, and the, let's say your husband, we're talking about, let's say, whatever, the wife, and her husband doesn't want to go with her to confession. So what should she then say to her husband? Well, again, before you say anything, you have to merit God's grace. And you're doing this especially by praying, uh, by your works of charity, by making sacrifices for his conversion. Um, I'm not sure when you'll actually hear this uh, Ask Father answer, but I'm recording it right before Pentecost. We're already in the days prior to Pentecost. So one thing that you can do is you can make a novena to the Holy Ghost. You can make a novena to the Holy Ghost praying that the Holy Ghost illumine your husband, that he illumine his intellect, and, the, and that the Holy Ghost inflame the heart of your husband with his love. And this applies in both cases. It applies in Martina's case, praying for the conversion of her husband to Catholicism, and it applies to the other case where it's, it's just a question of confession that still pray for that grace of conversion for one's spouse. And one can even be specific, and I encourage you to be specific. If it, had to, if it has to do with praying for the conversion to the sacrament of confession of a Catholic who is not going to confession or doesn't think he or she has to go to confession, then one of the ways that you can merit more grace for the conversion of that soul is make a resolution to you yourself, make even better confessions. You know, make a better examination of conscience. Be more contrite for your sins. Um, take more time meditating on the act of contrition. Pray the confidio with devotion. Pray the confidio with devotion for yourself and then pray it again in the name of your spouse. These are ways, again, you're praying, or if you're making sacrifices, your works of charity. What you're doing is you're doing good works, you're praying to gain more graces from God. Um, and this is what's most important when it has to do with the conversion of someone that you love. Now, after you do this, then finally, directly, when you ask Martina, what can I say to my husband? After you've done all this most important work of winning the graces necessary, again, through prayer, good works, sacrifices, your devotion, I think basically what you can tell him to try to encourage him, and again, this applies in both cases. If it's a question of conversion to Catholicism or conversion to the sacrament of confession or whatever other conversion is, is, is needed in terms of someone who wants to pick and choose, I think you just have to emphasize to the person, look, Jesus truly is God. And he has given us his church. He, he, he speaks to his church. It is Christ who teaches us through his church. And it is Christ himself who has given us this sacrament for our salvation. Who am I to question this? You know, you, you want to encourage your husband, strive to be grateful, to be so grateful to our Lord that he's given you, it is he who has given you through his church the sacrament of confession for your salvation. And it is our Savior Jesus Christ who knows best our, 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 our minds, our hearts, our souls, what we most need for our salvation, how we can most um, effectively cooperate with His grace, etc., etc. Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Mm -hmm.